What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast Show here on CBS Sports HQ. Will Brinson joined by Brian McFadden and John Breach for the next little bit as we talk some NFL. Uh, apparently, somebody realized there's no NBA games tonight and uh, hit the panic button and called us in to, to save the day with some NFL chatter. Just kidding. NFL is always exciting to do. And we're going to start with, uh, you know, the you know it used to be the NFC West was like the division that terrified everybody. And this offseason flipped everything on its head with the AFC West becoming the scariest division in football. BMAC, when you look at, you know, this division and all the new pieces that came in, whether it's Russell Wilson or Devontae Adams, Khalil Mack, uh, how do you think these teams stack up? And, and, and do you see the AFC, like how do you see the AFC West sort of shaking out with all these acquisitions? I mean, I, I think this division, when you look at the other divisions in the National Football League, they stack up as being the best. And the reason why I go that direction, when you look at the quarterbacks, right, the star power they all have at the quarterback positions in the AFC West it has been well documented. You talk about adding Russell Wilson, who we believe will be a Hall of Famer when it's all said and done, already hoisting a sticky Lombardi, having that in his resume. Then you look at Pat Mahomes. He seems like he is the forgotten quarterback in this division because of some of the other headlines some of the other teams have made, but he is still there. You look at the up and coming Justin Herbert and oh, by the way, what about Derek Carr, a guy who has been, you know, not considered to be some of the uh, the elites of the elite at that position, but yet and still, this is a guy who's been playing real top level football over the last few years. And one would think he will continue to do the same thing under the tutelage of Josh McDaniels. Yeah, it's funny you brought up Derek Carr, Mac, because that really speaks to the power of the AFC West. Derek Carr is arguably the worst quarterback in the division, but what does that even mean? Because he would be the second best quarterback in multiple other NFL divisions. That just tells you how stacked it is. And to see what these teams added uh, this offseason, I think one of the most fascinating teams right now in that division is the Kansas City Chiefs. Look, we saw them give up Tyreek Hill. So what did Andy Reid do? He's out there thinking, you know what, I'm just going to go grab a bunch of receivers this offseason like a Yahtzee cup and just shake it out and hope something comes out in my favor. It wasn't just using a draft pick on Sky Moore. Juju Smith-Schuster, we saw Marquez Valdez scantling now in Kansas City. Corey Coleman's in Kansas City. I mean, if anyone can rejuvenate that guy's career, it is probably Patrick Mahomes. So you have the Chiefs adding weapons. You have the Broncos adding a quarterback. You have the Raiders trading for one of the best receivers in the NFL. And then you have the Chargers. What do the Chargers do? I got to check mine. They, they signed Gerald Everett. So they are really focusing. Obviously, they got Cleo Mack. Uh, they got the defensive firepower, not so much the offensive firepower, but you know what? They have a strong team, and the AFC West is absolutely stacked from top to bottom. Yeah, there's a chance that we see, I mean, a small one, right, that all four AFC West teams could make the playoffs. The, the problem, like, when you think about that logic is, you know, they have to play each other twice, right? Like, every, you know, each each team has to play the other three teams twice. And, uh, and like, I, like, I don't even know what the math would be. Maybe they could tie every single division game and then split. Like, more than likely, you're going to get three teams in the playoffs. It's, it's a loaded AFC, by the way. It's going to end up with uh, likely somebody, a good team or two good teams, missing out on the playoffs. I think it's maybe more interesting when you look at the AFC West to focus in on these win totals. And so I'm curious, uh, BMAC, if you look at one particular win total, uh, what, what stands out to you from the AFC West? Well, it's the Chargers, Los Angeles Chargers. I think their win total is currently at 10. I go over, and here's why. Justin Herbert, up-and-coming superstar. Right. And with that being said, what did the Chargers do? They added more pieces to the puzzle around Justin Herbert. You brought back Mike Williams and you look at Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, the ultimate one two punch. They can coexist almost in any offense against any defense. You talked about breach adding Gerald Everett. He's a guy who has athleticism at the tight end position. He will do numbers because the thing about this when you have Mike Williams, you have Keenan Allen, he will have favorable matchups in his favor. Then you look at the draft, going to get my favorite interior offensive lineman in Zion Johnson with the first round selection. Remember what they did last year in getting Rashawn Slater as well. The ultimate left tackle protecting the blind side of Justin Herbert. I think this offense was going to be phenomenal. And then when you transition to the defensive side, guys, I mean, you already had Bosa. 
who was a nightmare for any opposing tackle he faced, offensive tackle. But then you go out and get Khalil Mack. You remove Khalil Mack from the Windy City, where his muscles might not have been as lubed up as it potentially could be in better weather to play indoors. We will see a, re, a, a rejuvenated Khalil Mack. Oh, also, can't forget about the ball hawking corner, J.C. Jackson, who they added from the New England Patriots. We know how difficult this division will be. But when you look at the balance on both sides of the football, along with the experience, I, for one, believe that win total of 10 will easily be surpassed by the Los Angeles Chargers this year. How about you, I like Breach? that, uh, you, you... Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I, I like that, BMAC. I, I, I was thinking about taking that one. Uh, but I went with the Broncos. But before I get to that, Brinson, uh, I noticed you mentioned that maybe all four teams can make it. I know math is not your forte, uh, but they play six division games. So if they split them all, they go three and three. They win all the other games. All four teams in that division can finish 14 and three, I think, maybe. Now you got to check my math. Uh, you know, the, the over I took here was the Broncos, who have the same over-under number as the Chargers at exactly 10. Uh, well, you know what? I like the over with Denver. And here's the thing, is that the Chiefs, the Broncos, the Chargers, they all feel pretty evenly matched. Maybe the Raiders are a slight, slight here below them. But the thing that really sets these teams apart for me is I feel like the Broncos have a small edge with the schedule. They finished in last place in 2021. They get the last place schedule, which means they get to face the Carolina Panthers. The other teams in the AFC West don't. They get to face the New York Jets. The other teams in the AFC West don't. So they have a couple games that should be on paper easier to win. And I think something small like that is going to be enough to put the Broncos over the top and get them over 10 wins. Obviously, they have Russell Wilson. Obviously, they have plenty of weapons. And, you know, when you talk about Russell Wilson, that is a guy who in the nine seasons where he was fully healthy with the Seahawks, they won 10 or more games in eight of those nine seasons. I think he does it again uh, in his first year in Denver. You know, you mentioned nine seasons. You know who's been uh, in Kansas City for nine seasons now? Andy Reid. Let's list his win total since he got to KC and started wearing those Hawaiian shirts. 11, 9, 11, 12, 10, 12, 12, 14, 12. And when you look at the 12, 12, 14, 12, last year, first year ever for Andy Reid to go under the win total, and they still won 12. Since Patrick Mahomes took over as a starting quarterback, for the Kansas City Chiefs, he and Andy Reid have not won less than 12 games. Yes, Tyreek Hill is now gone, but the Chiefs have added a lot this offseason. I think underrated moves, getting Juju Smith-Schuster, um, Marcus Valdez-Scantling. I'm not saying those guys are Tyreek Hill, because they're not. Uh, but they are certainly uh, weapons who, with the way that Andy Reid operates this offense, you know, you can put Sky Moore in the slot. You can put Juju in the slot. You know, you can have Valdez Scantling running these deep routes. He is so, he's a huge uh, vertical asset. And Mahomes is going to get comfortable with these guys and start to cook. And we're just getting a ton of value here for the Chiefs at 10 or 10 and a half, depending on where you get it. Uh, for their win total. I mean, this is, again, a team that hasn't won less than 12 games since Patrick Mahomes took over as a starting quarterback. Yes, I understand the division is harder. Yes, the, the Raiders, Chargers, and Broncos are all good. N am I worried about it? No. Well, I keep asking myself rhetorical questions about this division until I finally convince everyone else that the Chiefs are the best team in the division? Yes, probably. So, with that being said, BMAC, who's your pick to win the division this year? Or best value huh, bet? Anyway? I'm going... Yo, I'm going to keep it with the same thing with the Chargers. I'm going back out to Los Angeles. I'm taking the Chargers to win the division, and here's why. When you look at the quarterback, I think Justin Herbert will put up MVP-like numbers. Uh, another year of experience in the NFL as a starting quarterback, Austin Eckler. If he is healthy, he's one of the more balanced running backs in this division, along with the addition of, like I said, bringing back Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, and the offensive line, the structure is there. But the reason why I'm so hyped about what they are doing in totality with this team is their defense. I mean, you got Jerry Tillery, uh, you brought in Bo you brought in Khalil Mack, you got Bosa, you got a Kenneth Murray Jr., you brought in J.C. Jackson and pair it with Derwin James and Asante Samuel Jr. I mean, this defense will be a nightmare when you look at the value, the value at plus 250. So the quarterback play is high level. The defense, the edge rushers, high level. The secondary, high level. We know what type of duo in, in the pass catchers they have with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. For me personally, I know it's going to be a gauntlet 
to get through this division because it would be oh so competitive. But I believe the Chargers, in my opinion, especially year two with Brendan Staley, not playing Madden anymore, but actually coaching the game like it's real life and not going for it every fourth down opportunity. If he can master that ability, they would easily win this division. Give me the Chargers, plus 250. Yeah, the producers must really like us today because we're going to be picking different teams uh, this whole time. Uh, BMAC, I love the plus 250 value, except I don't love it with the Chargers. I love it with the Denver Broncos. Look, you saw what Denver did last season. It was uh, almost rock bottom. They went 7-10, and and that was mostly because they had a disastrous situation at quarterback. Uh, let me just tell you this. Of those 10 losses, the Broncos scored 14 points or less in seven games last season. They went 0-7 in those games. Their offense couldn't score points. And if you can't score points, you are not going to win in the NFL, no matter how good your defense is. Well, how do you solve that? You get rid of your quarterback. You get you ship Drew Locke out to Washington State, and you bring in Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is going to lead that offense to points. The defense is already good. It just needs a little bit of help from the offense, and I think it's going to get more than a little bit of help. I think it's going to get a lot of help from Russell Wilson. Uh, I think the Broncos turn into scoring machines this year. They're not going to have seven games with under 14 points. Uh, so I think the, the Broncos turn things around, win 11 or 12 games, and take home the division title. You guys are a bunch of Johnny come lately. He's looking to, to jump on the trendy bandwagons. You know what I like? It's old, reliable, big red Patrick Mahomes. I mentioned it with their win total. They are getting – this is a insane discount and a price tag for the Kansas City Chiefs. I, again, I understand how good the rest of the division is. I understand Tyreek Hill is no longer there. They still have a ton of weapons, and they added four uh, early round pieces on defense. So that defense should be improved from what it was a few weeks ago. There are absolutely red flags about this team, but as long as they have Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, and I'm getting plus money, plus 160, I am taking the Chiefs all freaking day long to win the division. Easy pick for me. I'm happy to let Russell Wilson or Justin Herbert make me look stupid. Or Derek Carr. No offense to Derek Carr, who, as Breach points out, maybe he actually probably is the greatest worst quarterback in a division in the history of professional football, which is pretty crazy. All right. We got more to cover, including a talk on the AFC North coming up next. Hey, if you want some more podcast action, make sure to download and subscribe to the Pick 6 Podcast, your daily NFL fix with, uh, oh, that's me, Will Brinson. We're going to dive into the AFC North. We mentioned the loaded AFC West on the previous block, and now we're going to talk about a different but still loaded division in the AFC North. And... Wait, maybe, maybe the most interesting question about this division, especially when you consider uh, old Breach here and his uh, being a fan. I mean, like, like this, is, this is the perfect group to talk about the AFC North, right? We have BMAC, obviously a two-time Super Bowl champion with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and John Breach, who has seen the Bengals lose three times in the Super Bowl in his life. Uh, and he's, he wasn't there for all three of them, but he was there for at least two of them. So you got that going for you, Breach. Uh, so let me ask the question. Here's the question I'm going to ask you. If you had to pick one quarterback in the AFC North to have on your team for the next five years, who are you taking, Breach, and why is it Mitchell Trubisky? Well, I think we all know the answer is not Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, it is Joe Burrow. Look, we can go through this entire division. I can tell you why it's not Lamar Jackson, why it's not Deshaun Watson, why it's not whoever the heck the Steelers are going to throw out. I don't even think BMAC can pick a Steelers quarterback here. But look, we'll go through all those quarterbacks. Only one of them has proven to be uh, have no problem with the, handling the pressure in the playoffs, getting his team to a Super Bowl, and that is Joe Burrow. He's already gotten to one. His future is bright. They've got weapons around him. They just stacked the offensive line. Uh, Burrow looks like the quarterback of the future in the AFC North. Lamar Jackson, we don't even know if he's going to be in the AFC North after the 2022 season because the Ravens can't get a long-term contract done with him. Uh, also, he's never even made it to a conference title game. We don't even know if Deshaun Watson's going to be on the field to start the 2022 season because he might be suspended. Uh, so if you are giving me a quarterback for the next five years, I am taking Joe Burrow, and you guys aren't allowed to, so you don't talk about Burrow. Wow. Wow. Well, well said, right, Will? He did a real good job. Yeah. Are you surprised, by the way, that Breach decided to go with Joe Cool? 
No I surprise, know. right? Yeah, the Niners. Well, for me, for me, I'm going with the guy who has shown the ability to make sweet tea with no sugar. And I'm saying that in regards to being productive as an individual passer, quarterback, playmaker with nothing around him. And I'm taking Deshaun Watson. Yes, John, I agree with you. We don't know exactly if he will be in uniform the entire season this year. But the question is, for the next five years, for the next five years, give me Deshaun Watson because he has the IT factor. He has the it factor. In Houston, when you, lack, when you look at the lack of structure, the lack of consistency when it comes to building a sound organization, he did not have that. But one thing he still had in his pockets was numbers, outstanding numbers. And oh, by the way, his winning percentage is <laughs> basically a fraction above Joe Burrow. Look at his numbers. Look at everything he's been able to do. Look at the passer rating. The passer rating, remember, they traded away his best pass catcher, DeAndre Hopkins, and he just kept he just kept flourishing in the offense, throwing to the who's of who that Houston provided him with. So one would think we will see better numbers. I do believe that. I do believe he will be suspended at some point in time, but the question is for the next five years. When you look at his talent, when you look at his accuracy, when you look at the IT factor, the athleticism, and just the heart and grit, to be a big time playmaker in some of the more clutch moments in ball games, give me number four and watch us do numbers. Oh, by the way, I used to love sweet tea, but since I don't drink anything with sugar anymore, I really don't touch sweet tea, but it used to be one of my favorite beverages. The, the smart thing about that sweet tea line, BMAC, and, and you know, as a, as a Southerner, like I, I, I did greatly appreciate it. It also helps you avoid the possibility of accidentally dropping a cuss word if you try to do the chicken salad route. Uh, you know, like you, you try to go like, I made chicken salad out of chicken something else, and then all of a sudden, yada, 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 you're fired from your job for saying a, a, a bad word on, on TV. Anyway, uh, I digress. I'm going to go Lamar Jackson here. And I think all three answers are perfectly viable. Joe Burrow led the Bengals to a Super Bowl this year, as everyone knows, because they lost to the Rams in that Super Bowl where they didn't win the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, Deshaun Watson, elite player on the field when he is, uh, you know, when he is uh, capable, when he is there. Um, and, you know, the, the certainly this season is up in, air, up in the air. But for the next five years, I expect him to be good. That's why the Browns paid the price they did. Lamar Jackson, though, is the only MVP on this list. And, man. I would, I'd probably bet it again at 20 to 1. I don't think Joe Burrow should be 13 to 1, shouldn't be ahead of him. Watson at 25 to 1, probably a little tough because we don't know what his status is. But Lamar has a unique skill set that no one else has. He is the fastest quarterback in the NFL. He's the most elusive quarterback in the NFL. You can build an offense around him. You can cater to his strengths. And when you do that, and we saw, we've seen what happened when because the, the Ravens have done that, he can put up, put together just magical seasons. I feel like people are sort of sleeping on Lamar Jackson here a little bit because of last year. The Ravens were devastated with injuries. They, they reloaded a bit. It does need some more help at wide receiver, but they added a couple tight ends in the draft, and Mark Andrews continues to develop into an elite-level prospect. I fully believe Lamar Jackson has another big season in him. I think the Ravens are pretty good value to win the division, and I will take Lamar as my quarterback over the next five years. BMAC, as you well know, defense wins championships, and defense in the AFC North is a must-have. When you look at this, uh, these, these defensive setups in the AFC North, who stands out to you as, as like some key defensive players to watch for in the 2022 season? I mean, anytime you talk about defensive players in the AFC North, I think you start and stop that conversation with TJ Watt and Miles Garrett, right? But outside of those two guys, there is an onslaught of pass rushers that can do it in a consistent way. Let's start and let's look at Hendrickson from Cincinnati. I mean, getting him from New Orleans a year ago paid dividends for their defense, had double-digit sacks. I know John cheered for him a lot as he harassed opposing quarterbacks, and he did it in a consistent way. I think, once again, he will have a phenomenal year. And the, th the same thing could be said for his counterpart in Hubbard, playing the opposite of Hendrickson. I think these two guys would do a great job in, what they, in, in, in capping off and adding to what they did last year. But then let's look at the Baltimore Ravens. Bringing back Calais Campbell, uh, that was a big, big need for them. But one player that I like with Baltimore, when you look at Odafe Owe, talented, what, second-year player, uh, who's really starting to come into his own, not just in the National Football League, but most importantly there in Baltimore, I think he has an opportunity to give at least 
12 sacks, provide at least 12 sacks for the Baltimore Ravens. So that's a new up and coming name to monitor when you look at this division when it comes to defensive minded guys and the guys that do a great job in sacking opposing quarterbacks. Man, I mean, all those defensive players plus these quarterbacks that we talked about make it to make this a really tough division to pick, but we got to make picks anyway. So, Breach, we'll start with you. I have a feeling where you two homers might go, but I'll let you see if you can surprise me, Breach. Uh, no surprises here, Brinson. You know, it's funny. If I had a dollar for every time you mentioned this offseason, the Bengals lost the Super Bowl, I would be not on the show right now because I'd be retired in Barbados. Uh, but I am not there because you did not give me that dollar even though you have mentioned it 7 billion times. Anyway, I am picking the Bengals to get back and then win the Super Bowl so Brinson can shut up about it. But you know what? When I look at this division, uh, yeah, the Browns are stacked right now, but we still have that Deshaun Watson suspension hanging over their head. We don't know if he's going to be out at all. Maybe he misses six games. Maybe he misses 10 games. No one has any idea. So I think it's hard to put a futures bet on the Browns when you don't even know who their starting quarterback is going to be. Same with the Steelers. And I feel like that leaves you with Baltimore or the Bengals. And uh, I know the Ravens were beat up last year, but I just the, the Bengals offense was just able to move the ball up and down the field on the Ravens defense. And I think they're going to be able to do that again. I think Cincinnati's going to have another good team and that they weren't a fluke or a one year wonder. And I am going to pick the Bengals to win the division in 2022. Well, John, sorry to uh, uh, bust your bubble, but recent history tells <laughs> us the team that loses the Super Bowl, they have a down year, right, Will? Last time I checked, it's, uh, yeah, like, it's not a good streak. Yeah. yeah, it's not a good streak. So obviously you have your hopes extremely high, but I don't know if you will be able to see those hopes become a reality. I'm taking the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you guys, I know you should be surprised, but it is what it is. And here's why, <laughs> right? Yes, yeah, so when you look at the quarterback situation, will it be Mitch Trubisky? Will it be Kenny Pickett? I think starting off, it will be Trubisky. And I think Trubisky will do great things in this offense, more so than what we've seen in his professional career because of the structure. Najee Harris is potentially the best, one of the best running backs in the AFC North. I'm not going to say he is the best, but he is one of the best in the AFC North. Clearly behind Chubb. Wide receiver wise, they got three guys who can go. Look at the tight end and pack up and coming emerging superstar, a revamped offensive line. But the reason why I love this pick defensively, they get Stefan Tuitt back, who basically missed the entire season. You pair him up with Cam Hayward. Remember Tyson uh, was missing from last year. He missed the majority of the entire season, or half of the season. You get TJ Watt. You get Devin Bush, who's fighting for a contract. You add Miles Jack. You get Fitzpatrick back into the fold. Add in Levi Wallace with a spoon. This is a defense that once again probably will lead the league in sacks. And when they're sacking the quarterback, they're creating turnovers. They're doing outstanding things to give their offense extra possessions. So me personally, give me the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, by the way, I still believe they have the best coach in the division. That means something as well. Uh, no, look, I know that people will probably call you crazy for picking the Steelers. I don't think they're a bad bet to win the division at 10 to 1. If they get remotely good quarterback play, uh, whether it's Pickett or Trubisky, um, and to be max point, Mike Tomlin, an elite coach. Uh, also an elite coach, uh, John Harbaugh. And he's been a great coach for a long time. He's had a lot of success. I mentioned how much I like Lamar Jackson over the next five years. I really like him this year. And I think you will see a Ravens team get a lot of positive injury regression after just a – I mean, they lost like three running backs in a 24-hour span in the preseason to ACL, uh, ACL injuries. You know, Ronnie Stanley's down. They lose Marcus Peters. Everybody was banged up on Baltimore. I think they have a big-time bounce-back season and present pretty nice value uh, to win the AFC North at more than 2-1. to one. It will be a hard-fought battle, of course, because it always is in that division. But give me the Baltimore Ravens to win the division. BMAC, give me some reasons why people should be checking out All Things Covered, the excellent CBS Sports podcast you do with Pat P. Oh, man, I appreciate The same reason they should be checking out the Peak 6 pod. Because we deliver great content, entertaining content. We do a great job in highlighting things regarding the NFL, uh, individual players as guests. Uh, just getting ready for this upcoming season. The draft just finished. So of course, we have a lot to talk about. Recapping the draft, recapping the ex going over the expectations, right, for the Minnesota Vikings and, 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 and Pat P himself as an individual. So the same reason why everyone is tuning in to the Pick 6 pod, you should tune into All Things Covered. I love it, man. A, pic a podcast collaboration. We're all on the same team around here. We should do uh, this often. Is gonna be 
That's right. We should. BMAC's going to bounce. We're going to be joined by Tyler Sullivan after the break. BMAC, always a pleasure, buddy. Uh, we will be back after this quick commercial break. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Pick 6 Podcast Show here on CBS Sports HQ. Will Brinson joined by John Breach. And now, hopping on with us, Tyler Sullivan. Okay, Sully, what's up? How are we doing, guys? All right, we're going to dive into the AFC East, and we're going to start Breach with the Buffalo Bills, who are the favorites to win the Super Bowl. The Buffalo Bills, who have never won a Super Bowl, are the favorites to win the Super Bowl thanks to the play of Josh Allen, the coaching from Sean McDermott, and the roster building for Brandon Bean. Do you agree, Breach, and is this possibly their year? Uh, I agree that they should be the favorites. I feel like on paper, they are the best team in the AFC. I actually picked them to go to the Super Bowl last season when they did not go to the Super Bowl. Uh, and you know what? Now I flip because now I don't think they're going to go to the Super Bowl. Here's the problem is that I just think the AFC is way too loaded. I mean, we're talking about a team that's even making it to the conference title game last season. Forget the Super Bowl. They haven't been able to figure out the Chiefs. That's been kind of the bane of their existence. We don't know that they can uh, beat Kansas City, and maybe the Chiefs losing Tyree Kill will help them. Uh, but then it's not just the Chiefs. You have the Chargers. You have the Ravens. You have the Bengals. You have the Colts. The Titans were the number one seed in the AFC last year, for heaven's sake. So I just think it's too loaded, and things have to come together perfectly at the right time. I don't know if the Bengals were the best team in the AFC last season, but they made it to the Super Bowl, and I feel like that's something we're going to see again in 2022. Uh, it just seems like ever since we expanded to 14 teams, the favorite has a tough time sneaking into the Super Bowl, and the Bills are the favorite, so I don't think they're going to get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, but we're talking about a team that was 13 seconds away. It's not like they didn't make the AFC Championship just because they weren't playing that well. They were right there. They basically had it, and Patrick Mahomes just went nuclear in that divisional game there. So, again, we're talking about a team that is unbelievably loaded in the Buffalo Bills. Last year, they were the number one team in DVOA defensively, and they go out this year and add Vaughn Miller to that group. They're absolutely stacked on that side of the ball. Offensively, Josh Allen is a legit MVP candidate. I'm so fascinated to see what Gabe Davis is able to do next year after that breakout performance in that playoff game last year. And I think Jamison Crowder is probably one of the most underrated additions to an offense this offseason. He was money with the New York Jets, and we've seen over the course of history now, when you leave the New York Jets, you are extremely productive. He was already productive in New York. Now he goes to Buffalo with a quarterback like Josh Allen. That offense just got that much better. Yeah, I, I think the Bills, like Breach said, probably should be the favorites. You know, when you look at this team, it, like, they're loaded, and they're going to be really good. Um, you know, there is, I do have a couple of concerns, uh, you know, with – so I, like, just looking at some things from last year and then some of the transition. For instance, like, what what happened against the Jaguars last year? What was that? You know, like, you, you scored, like, six points against Jacksonville? Is, is, are we going to see any of those instances this season? And, and I thought R.J. White made a great point on the Pick 6 podcast audio version uh, live on YouTube, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern every single day for the rest of eternity uh, on, I believe, Tuesday or Wednesday. And he pointed out that the uh, we're not talking enough about the offensive coordinator change in Buffalo. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, like, Brian Dayball, you know, you can, you can be fine with Ken Dorsey, and there's a very good chance that he's a great play caller and that Josh Allen won't be too impacted. But, I mean, Dayball was an elite-level offensive coordinator who allowed Josh Allen to really mature and develop into this you know, MVP candidate. So I think that is just something to watch if they come out slow. But certainly, you look at you know, what they did with Kyrie Elam in the draft and then Von Miller, Crowder, who I agree with Sully is an extremely underrated player, and then building some tight end depth with O.J. Howard. I mean, this is a really, really good football team that deserves to be the favorite. But, man, it's, uh, it's hard to win in the NFL even when you're supposed to. Sully, Bill Belichick, 20 years, winning, 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 and then Tom Brady leaves, not so much winning. Uh, they still made the playoffs last year. We're probably too far down on them. How big is this season for Belichick, uh, who is going into the year without any coordinators, uh, something that has my antenna raised uh, very high in the air? Yeah, I think this is a huge year for Bill Belichick, the GM. The head coach, ironclad, there's nothing going to happen to him. I mean, they, I, I think they could literally lose every single game and Robert Kraft still wouldn't move on from him. That's how <laughs> rock solid he is as a head coach. But we are coming off an offseason now where if you look at Robert Kraft at the owner's meeting, 
He was very apparent and very upfront saying that, listen, we haven't won a playoff game in four years. The drafts outside of the 2021 draft haven't produced the talent that can really help you elevate to a playoff contender, to a Super Bowl contender. That's why they had to spend that boatload of money last offseason. There's some head-scratching moments in this draft. Cole Strange at number 29 overall is probably the biggest one that you kind of go, okay, a guard, first round, Chattanooga. I, I guess, sure, that's fine. Yeah, you needed it because you traded away Shaq Mason, but there were certainly other needs there. The loss of J.C. Jackson, massive. You don't have a number one corner to replace him. The linebacker unit is extremely thin there. So if you're looking at it from a roster construction standpoint, and you end this season on a lackluster note like you did last year where you weren't even able to force a punt for the Buffalo Bills in the playoffs, Robert Kraft's going to take a hard look at how this team is evaluating talent. Not so much the head coach, but Bill Belichick, the GM, will certainly be on the hot seat at that point. Yeah, it's, it feels almost like Bill Belichick is trying to make things harder on himself. Oh, I'm such a great coach. I'm going to give myself a not-so-great roster and see if I can win with it just so I can have more challenges after winning six Super Bowls. Because uh, it, it legitimately is starting to feel like that with all the questionable calls that they've been making in the front office, which Belichick is in charge of, as Tyler mentioned. And it is weird to hear Robert Kraft, who has enjoyed having six Super Bowl rings because Belichick was the coach of his team. But Robert Kraft has come out in the last couple of years, not just this offseason, but uh, offseason before that, just kind of subtly calling out Belichick and his drafting ability and what they've been doing in the offseason. And so you have to think that maybe Belichick takes that kind of personally, and you have to think that he needs to prove that A, he can win without Brady, and B, he can construct these rosters and saying, look, I knew what I was doing the whole time. We can still win playoff games, compete for division titles, and win Super Bowls. Uh, but I'm not sure they can. The way this roster is constructed, I'm not sure that it is a top 10 roster in the AFC, and you need to be top seven to get to the playoffs. That's, that's a hot take there. Actually, I don't know that you do have to be a top seven roster to go to the playoffs with the way that the AFC West is structured. But I digress. Yeah, I mean, look, this is a huge year for the Pats. You know, they, like Tom Brady winning a Super Bowl the, the second he left New England is just makes it a tough scene for Belichick. Mac Jones, if he takes a leap forward and looks like the future, you know, future franchise quarterback, that will, that will benefit them a lot, obviously. But not having those coordinators and maybe giving, uh, Turning you know Mac Jones over to Matt Patricia and Joe Judge uh, and, and doing it very quietly again is a bit of a red flag there for old Billy B. Uh, but he's still the goat, and I, I'm sure that Bob Kraft will give him uh, plenty of wiggle room. Uh, the two teams that continue to stink in the division, although the, the Dolphins have been better the last few years, but they just fired their coach. The Dolphins are the Jets. If you had to pick one for each. Like you, like who, who has a better chance of being good based on their, their for, for the long haul? Like who, who's, who's, who's roster is in the best shape moving forward? Jets or Dolphins? Uh, the Jets have done a lot of work over the past year, but I am going to say the Dolphins. Look, the Jets are starting from rock bottom. This is like asking who's going to win a race, uh, a hundred meter race between me, me and you, Brenton, and I have an 80 meter head start. I would think I'm going to win. It just feels like the Dolphins have a huge head start here. This is a team that went nine and eight last season, even though they started one and seven, they were on the cusp of the playoffs. They only finished uh, out of first place by two games. And, and so it feels like the one thing they need is a quarterback. Uh, is two of that quarterback? I'm not sure yet, but maybe he can take a few small steps forward. Uh, and if he doesn't, then you can get rid of him after this year. I don't know. Maybe go out and sign Tom Brady, who's going to be a free agent. Uh, but you have uh, – I like the Dolphins roster the way it's built. I think the Jets are definitely going to get better. They went 4-13 and last year. Even if they improve by three or four games, that's still under 500. So it, it's going to be tough for them to have a total turnaround and get to 11 or 12 wins. Uh, and Zach Wilson, we, don't, we have no idea if he is going to pan out. And so – if Zach Wilson continues to struggle, it's going to be tough for the Jets to turn things around. So I would say right now, if I had to pick a team that is built to succeed out of those two over the next five years, I'd go with the Dolphins. Yeah, outside of the Dolphins, you know, and getting Tom Brady next year, I'm going to go with the New York Jets. I like what they're building over the long term. Again, you know, next year, the couple years after that, you know, the Dolphins could probably be a little bit more in contention. But I think a lot of the credit that we've been giving them over the last few years was a testament to Brian Flores and his acumen as a head coach. We don't really know what Mike McDaniel is going to be. And I'm not saying we know what Robert Sala is definitively 
yet as he goes into year two, but I'm a little bit more confident in him, and I like the overall roster construction that GM Joe Douglas is doing in New York. I mean, that draft was was flawless, in my opinion. They were able to come away with, I think what they had was, you know, eight three players that were all in the top 10 in their draft board. It's just an absolutely ridiculous haul when you look at it from that standpoint. Obviously, they got the running back there in the second round as well. But overall, it centers around Zach Wilson and whether or not he is able to make that jump. Because right now, they remind me of the Buffalo Bills when they were kind of constructing their roster when they just got Josh Allen. If we see anything close to that type of a leap from Zach Wilson, it is lookout Patriots, it's lookout Dolphins for that second place spot in the AFC East. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the Jets, too, although it's pretty close. Like, I think the Dolphins as a whole, I trust more. But um, And I, I say this at the risk of massive blowback from, from the cult that is to Anon. But I, I, like, I just think that Zach Wilson has a better chance of taking some big leap. And you're talking about, like, I love Mike McDaniel, but you're talking about relatively uh, negligible differences in terms of the coaching staffs. Both come from the Kyle Shanahan tree. The other thing about the Dolphins, too, let's not forget, Let's, we got to see what happens with uh, Stephen Ross and ownership down there in Miami uh, once the NFL handles this investigation of that whole Brian, the Brian, Brian Flores thing because there's a potential for a lot of turnover and chaos down there in South Florida if it ends up going poorly for Ross and those involved there. All right. Give me your best bet, best value pick. Best, you just want to pick the team you think is going to win, uh, the AFC East breach. Uh, well, hold on, because – my best value bet and the team I think are going to win are two different teams, Brenton. Uh, so, you know what? I'm going to tell you the team I think is going to win is the Bills, but I think my best value bet is the Dolphins, and that's because they are 4-1. to one. Look, this is a team that was on the cusp of being really good last year if they didn't get off to that horrible start. They ended up finishing 9-8 and eight after that nice rebound, uh, and that was only two games off of what the Bills did. And if you're talking about 4-1, to one, this team added Tyree Kill. If Tua can take just a small step forward, take advantage of having offensive players like that in his system. Uh, there's no reason the Dolphins can't win this division. And let's not forget, they have Mike McDaniel as their head coach now. I think that's going to help Tua because you have an offensive-minded head coach and somebody who's going to be able to work with the quarterback a lot more closely. Uh, so if I am going for a value pick, it is the Miami Dolphins. You know, I think we got to get a little careful here when we talk about value. Yes, things can happen where a team ascends, but sometimes there's a slam dunk. And at minus 180, I still view the Buffalo Bills as a slam dunk value play to win this division. I mean, I look at the AFC East more like the NFC South with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers being the elite team. And then there's the rest of that bunch. Then say the AFC West where it's a gauntlet. You don't know who's going to come out of it because everybody's so competitive. For me, there is a clear teardrop after Buffalo here. And it really, you just look at the quarterbacks, Josh Allen, Mac Jones, Tua Tunga Bailoa, and Zach Wilson. One of those is elite. The other three, we have to wait and see how they develop. I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills minus 180. I still think that that's great money. Yeah, I, I think the Bills are going to win uh, the division. I think it is pretty decent money. You could also, if you can find somewhere, you can't do this on Caesars, but parlay uh, the Bills, Packers, and Buccaneers. You know, you're you're probably going to get those three division winners. I will say the Patriots at four to one. I think present value. You're talking about Belichick as a like plus four plus four hundred for Bill Belichick to win the AFC East. I mean, I'll take that gamble all day long. Although I do think the Bills are your winner. All right, coming up next, some AFC South talk here on the Pick Six Podcast Show on CBS Sports HQ. Welcome back to the Big Six Podcast Show here on CBS Sports HQ, the AFC South. Oh, a mystery wrapped in an enigma. An enigma. I can't talk today. Enigma. Jeez Louise. And, uh, <laughs> and man, I tell you what, uh, it, it has caused some drama in Tennessee with Ryan Tannehill having this to say after the Titans drafted Malik Willis. I mean, that's part of uh, being in a quarterback room in the same room. You know, we're, we're competing against each other. We're... Uh, you know, watching the same tape, we're, we're doing the same drills. Um, I don't think it's my job to mentor him, but, um, you know, if he learns, learns from me along the way, then, um, then that's a great thing. Breach is our resident Nashville resident. This is a really rough segment. This is a really rough block for yours truly. Uh, Breach is our resident Nashvilleian. What do you think about... Ryan Tannehill's claim that he doesn't need to mentor Malik Willis. I think Ryan Tannehill needs to hire a PR guy. I mean, the last guy who came out and said he didn't want to uh, 
mentor someone was Joe Flacco, and we saw how that turned out for Flacco. He was done in Baltimore a few weeks into the season. Uh, you know what? If you're Ryan Tannehill, the answer to this question is simple. You just say, you know what? I'm going to be spending a lot of time with Malik Willis this season. We're going to be in the same practices, the same QB room. And if he has any questions, I'll be more than happy to help. You can just kind of answer the question, but also duck the question. And everyone would have moved on and been happy. That is not what he did. This was not the answer he should have given. Uh, it just makes you look, I don't want to say selfish, uh, but... It, as, as much as you're trying to keep your position and, and try to remain the starter, this is also a team sport. I need to keep all the team on the same page. And you're a leader. You're the quarterback. And it doesn't feel like he did that with this comment. Yeah, I'm with her with, in, with Breach. I mean, you know, he should have just lied. I mean, yeah, sure. I'll absolutely take him under my wing, yada, yada, yada. You get closed doors and you just slam the door in his face. That's really what probably Ryan Tannehill should have done and just lie and say that he's going to help him, but really not. But ultimately, I do think this could be a good thing for Ryan Tannehill. I don't think that he should have to mentor his replacement. It's not He's not that legacy quarterback who's on his way out, who said he's going to only play for a couple more years. He still wants to play in this league for the foreseeable future, so I don't think he necessarily has to groom anybody. But when I say I think this could be good for him, look at what we've seen over the last few years here when teams draft the successor with another quarterback already in place. Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love. He goes out and wins back-to-back -back MVPs. Tom Brady, back in 2014 when the team drafted Jimmy Garoppolo, his completion percentage was dipping steadily, consistently, four years in a row. All of a sudden, they draft Garoppolo, it goes back up, and the Patriots are winning Super Bowls again. So sometimes this can help teams with the veteran quarterback, even if they bring in that youngster. Yeah, I mean, look, it's... I don't blame Ryan Tannehill for being upset and I do think that Ryan Tannehill is pretty good generally speaking about being honest to the media being honest when he's speaking to fans you know not not being not, he doesn't hide from anything he's a leader on that team and not only did they draft Malik Willis I mean more importantly they traded AJ Brown like that's like that he's like whatever like you drafted Malik Willis in the third round I'm mad that you traded AJ Brown in the first round and you wouldn't give him more than 16 million dollars a year look around me man give throw me a throw me a friggin bone here and give me some help at wide receiver uh also we've seen Ryan Tannehill earlier this offseason kind of like you know, there's there's like chatter he's staying away from the team clearly his reps had reached out to the Titans and said, hey, we'd like to work on a contract extension, and Tennessee's not interested in it. So I think there's probably a sense with Tannehill that this is kind of the end of his run in Tennessee no matter what. And that's probably, you know, that it, when you feel that way, and that was sort of the same thing with Flacco, by the way, when you feel that way, it does tend to make you a little less likely to, to, to want to mentor somebody and to, uh, to, to lie in public when you're asked about it. Uh, the Colts were, uh, were the, you know, were a disappointment last year. That's what happens when you have Carson Wentz on your roster. Everyone knows that. Now, though, they have Matt Ryan. They are the favorites to win the division breach. Should they be the favorites to win the division? And who do you think will win the division? Uh, Brinson, you called a 9-8 and eight team disappointment. That is how high the expectations were for the Colts. I do think they should be the favorites to win the division. I think the Indianapolis Colts are absolutely stacked. And not only do they have Matt Ryan... But they have Matt Ryan finally playing, he gets to play behind a competent offensive line that's actually going to be able to protect him. He actually has weapons, one of the best run games in the NFL with Jonathan Taylor. This is not what he has had with the Falcons over the past few years. And then, you know, everyone talking about the Matt Ryan trade all offseason, you really forget how good this defense is. I mean... We have Darius Leonard, DeForest Buckner, Yannick Ngakwe on that defense. And let's not forget, oh yeah, they added Stephon Gilmore. I mean, the defense is absolutely loaded. Plus, you upgraded at quarterback. We saw the odds there, uh, Indianapolis Colts at even money. I actually think they are the best value of any team in the NFL to win their division uh, right now. You get plus money, you get even money with the Colts and they only have one other team to compete with because Jacksonville's not winning the division. Houston's not winning the division. Maybe Tennessee, but you beat out one team, you get your even money back. I, I think the Colts should be favorites, and they're the best value to win the division. I will co-sign everything Breach just said. I'm taking the Colts. I like them to win this division. And not only that, they're a sleeper team to win the Super Bowl at 22-1. to 1. That's good value there. Oh! Wow! Well, Sully's just dropping the hammer. with the, <laughs> I'm signing on that way, for they might win the Super Bowl, too. They might win. Yeah. Uh, look, I actually don't think that's that crazy. And I, I, I've been surprised to see just how 
Like, there hadn't been as much optimism about Matt Ryan playing with this team. I mean, Matt Ryan still has a lot of good football left in him. He looked perfectly fine and perfectly capable of producing some high-level football last year when he was playing for the Falcons, even though they haven't had the results the last few years. And I think this is pretty similar to Phillip Rivers coming to town where he gets to work with Frank Reich. Rivers had more experience with Reich's system, of course. But, I mean, it's, it's a really nice setup for Matt Ryan. I think at plus 100, with the moves that the Titans have made, with the possibility that Malik Willis could come in midway through the season if Ryan Tannehill isn't playing well, with Derrick Henry you know, coming off that injury, how will he respond? Um, you know, with A.J. Brown gone... I think the Colts are fantastic value at anything with a plus sign in front of it. I, you know, I would even probably take them to minus 125. They just feel to me like the best team in the division, well coached, maybe a Super Bowl sleeper, but absolutely my pick to win the division as we stand here today. Of course, it being May, and we don't even know the schedule, but you know, not too, never too early to pick a division winner, and that's what we did here. All right, that'll do it for us here on the Pick 6 Podcast Show. For BMAC, for Sully, for Breach, I'm Brinson. We'll see you guys later. Make sure to check out the podcast, your daily NFL fix with yours truly. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.